I haven't updated you guys on the chickens for a while. They are, uh, well, they're getting big. We've got uh, Brenda and Nikki and Henny and the big man, Mr. Edwina, after Edwina the dinosaur. They're doing really well. Uh, haven't been giving me as many eggs as I'd like lately. Pony up those eggs, ladies. But uh, they're doing well. It's a lot nicer to have them in here than when we had them outside. So I like having them around. They're pretty fun. Let's see if we've got any eggs today. Bye, chickens. Ooh. Got a nice egg. This one is definitely a Nikki egg. It's a little small and just a light tan. Um, Brenda's tend to be a little bit bigger and darker and Henny's are really big and not sort of egg shaped, more oval with spots. So this is definitely a Nikki egg. She's a pretty reliable producer. Right on, yummy. I'm a couple hours north of, uh, of Edmonton here, just heading to one of my favorite little out of the way ice fishing spots here. So the uh, road's a little rough, so I will uh, focus on that and get back to you in a couple of minutes. Okay, so here we are, and it looks like nobody has been out here for quite some time, so I don't know what the ice is like. So I'm gonna have to go explore first because we've had such weird weather. Okay, so it's minus 23 out there, so it's fairly cold, but when you're working, it's not so bad. Uh, you can see my auger way out there. Just punched some holes. It's uh, pretty deep. It's at least deeper than my ice scoop, which is like 16, 18 inches. So good and thick. So we'll head out on the lake. Managed to cut my thumb pretty good on my auger blades. So gotta find some band-aids. All right, uh, get you there, I guess. Always, when you're driving on a lake, especially if there aren't other trucks, window down, seatbelt off. Quicker to get out. Just in case, I don't foresee any problems here. Somebody else was fishing over here not too long ago, but I didn't like that spot as much, so I'm heading over here. Alrighty, got the place all to myself. I hate maggots, but they work. killing my phone but just to show you in here I got the heater set up over there I, don't, I can't even it's so foggy yeah there it is so warm in here already that uh, I can have just a t-shirt on but I got to go plug in this phone so well <laughs> hush buddy I was rigged up for perch and I thought boy that's a big perch <laughs> or a small pike. I don't know why he went for that bait, but 
Hey, hey, no, you missed, buddy. There you go. Bye. <laughs> that was exciting. Nice little perch. That's third fish today. Woohoo! Number four. He's just a little guy. I think he'll go back. Just a little guy. There you. You gotta be a little careful with perch. They got spiny fins. They can get you. There you go. Bye bye. Oh, this is a little tiny guy. <laughs> You're so little and cute. Come here, you. You're not even a bite. You're not even a bite. Bloop. Go on, get down. Good boy. All right, so uh, bringing home a couple of perch, so that's kind of nice. Got to run for home. I did see a couple of whitetail on the way in, which was kind of nice overall. Pretty successful. Uh, very cold. I wish I could have got. Uh, truthfully, I would have kept some of those other perch if I had known that I wasn't going to get any bigger ones. But that's the way it goes, I guess. So, all right. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Uh, joining me on this fishing trip if you ever come up this way in the winter i'll take you it's uh it's pretty fun so thank you for joining me and we will see you next time if i don't crash on this crazy little trail cheers well apologies for the uh for the mess around here there's a lot of stuff in here i still got to put away but uh i think next time you hang out with me Old Gil here will probably not be in the shop. Pretty certain that experiment has shown me that the needle valve is leaking on the carburetor, but we have a shutoff valve, and for now, that's what's going to solve the problem. I still have a lot of plans for making Old Gil nicer, but for now, it runs, it works. I'm going to move it into the other garage for the remainder of winter. That's where it's going to sit because ultimately, it's approaching the end of February, and this thing is still in here. And it'd be pretty nice to sell it in the spring. Maybe I can sell it as a, you know, fix her up over the summer and give her a ride in the winter. But I'd like to ride it this winter yet. Hopefully my knee feels better soon enough and I get back to regular work. It's not really fair to my employer if I knock around at, at work doing light duties because my knee hurts and then come home and ride around on this old banger that that wouldn't be appropriate at any rate i decided that the fuel tank needed to come out and get cleaned because it is disgusting so i'm going to take that fuse and give it a wash out and uh, can wipe down that area whatever and get that cleaned up properly and then finish up the fuel system mount the exhaust properly and then i don't think there's anything stopping me from you know, I'll probably give it a grease up here and there and, and little odds and ends, but basically then I think I can take it for a ride. Uh, so hopefully there will still be enough snow. I want to say this. Had quite a large number of new subscribers lately, and I just had to take a minute to acknowledge all of the viewers and subscribers that take the time to like videos and leave comments. It's just, it blows my mind every time I release a video the comments that people leave are just so encouraging and kind and you know I I probably would have stopped by now if it wasn't for getting so much positive feedback from everybody I would never have expected this kind of uh, response in a million years so I'm I'm really just I'm just um, I'm at a loss for words honestly I guess <laughs> So thank you so much. Today, what have I got going on? Well, it's a little later in the evening as per usual and my knee's kind of sore again. So I'm gonna kind of take it easy a little bit, but I do need to get this thing going before the snow melts and that's probably not too far away. So I've taken the fuel tank to the car wash and, and washed it all out and given it a nice shine up with fluid film. It looks great. It looks brand new. So I'm really happy with that. I'm going to pull the exhaust off of here and change the exhaust mounts because most of them are rotted right out and then connect up the fuel lines and some odds and ends and uh, you know whatever else I find once it's running. Maybe the lights don't work. Who knows? But I think we'll be 
pretty close to getting this thing out at least one time on the snow, rip around the yard a little bit and uh, see what works and what doesn't. So that's pretty exciting. Get to work. that might be as far as we get tonight, I decided to check the flow characteristics of the fuel pickups uh, that were found laying in the bottom of the fuel tank here. And uh, as it turns out, uh, the one that I was going to use for the reserve was uh, impervious to fuel. And so in learning that, I thought, well, I better check the other one. And it too is impervious to fuel. I know they, I think they have a check valve in them. Uh, so maybe that's what's uh, stuck. So I have them soaking in some carb cleaner here. I'll let them soak overnight, but I don't like my chances. And really, am I just asking for trouble down the road? Probably. And then Luke and I can make a little trip in tomorrow into town and get some that are pervious to fuel. Yeah, that's all right. I'm tired. Now I can go inside. So, all right. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Today I fell victim to not taking my own advice. Two years ago attended a training course put on by Dixie Electric. Dixie of course rebuilds alternators and starters for many years and they put on a course on automotive charging and starting systems and the instructor told me if you don't want to replace starters and alternators change your battery every five years whether you think you need it or not and those are words I've lived by. So anyway, there I was, outside of a pet supply store 20 minutes from home, with a dead 7-year-old battery, and with Top Tech in tow. Thankfully, Mama Cat came to the rescue with a set of uh, booster cables and the assistance of one of the staff members at uh, G&E Pharmacy there in Edmonton. Uh, great place if you need medication, like you've got way too many cats like I do and they need dewormer once in a while. So on my way home, I stopped a good old Canadian tire because they had the battery in stock. I'm actually going to put this on charge before I put it in. Most retail outlets really don't have the infrastructure to keep all their batteries on the racks on a trickle charge system. So it's always a good idea when you bring a new battery home, if you can, just throw it on a light charge before you install it. Sure enough, this guy here is only about 50% charged. So I'm just going to put it on a 1 amp charge, come back later tonight once it's fully charged and throw this battery in. It's easy to do, it takes 5 minutes to put the battery in. But Some of you viewers, well most of you viewers are probably going to be pretty familiar with a task like this, but uh, I understand that I do have some viewers who are maybe less mechanically inclined and so for you folks I just want you to be aware that you know you might be tempted to have Canadian Tire install your battery and I would say in most cases that's really not necessary. Some vehicles, Dodge Journey comes to mind and, and some of the uh, Chrysler 200s where the battery is, you got to take the wheel off and the liner and stuff to get at the battery, it's just crazy. In that case, yeah, I'd be tempted to pay someone else. But on a vehicle like this Patriot, it's super easy. Basically you've got a clamp just grab it here so this is your hold down clamp and it's just gonna bolt in our case you can just see the bolt hole down there and that's where that bolts on and this slides so that you can slide this side up against the battery and make sure that it's got a bit of a bevel on it and it'll catch the bottom there's a lip on the battery and it'll catch it and hold it down so you're just basically gonna shove the battery all the way this way because there's also a little lip on the battery box down here and that's going to catch that side and then when we install this clamp it's just going to secure it there always make sure to clean out 
the clamps uh, you can see still there's some corrosion here but that doesn't contact the battery so you can buy a little round wire brush that well I'll just show you it's right here these are really inexpensive so it's got a brush here that is for cleaning the post so you put it on and always turn clockwise because these guys will dig in if you go the wrong way so you always turn clockwise and it'll just shine those up and I've done these even though they were pretty clean and brand new it's been sitting for a while and they'll get you know oxidized and stuff so now they're nice and clean and then you just there we go spin that out and you've got a little round brush for cleaning up inside here obviously be careful and don't when the battery here especially don't make circuits that you don't want to make but in this case the ground's disconnected always disconnect the ground first the negative the black cable disconnect it first because basically the whole vehicle is negative so if you leave that connected now the whole vehicle's negative and if you touch your wrench to anything here you're going to do some 12 volt welding you don't want to do that so disconnect the negative and now nothing is going to happen likewise connect up your positive first Negative. Same thing. That's about it. Now there's a bunch of different coatings you can spray on this to keep the corrosion down. I have some cleaners and stuff as well to spray on. Basically though, uh, the little intake cover has got to go in here. And that's it. Job done. I'm going to... Uh, load test the old battery and see what's up and see if I okay so 525 cold crank amps so we're looking somewhere around the middle range here between four and six hundred so when we apply the load for 10 seconds then we'll see where it's at So it's weak.